Hello and welcome back to chapter five, module five, call it, uh, video two. All right, so let's continue on. Don't forget to write your notes. Uh, what happens if you have redundant links like this, two ports, um, two links that are connected between switches and they have exactly the same cost? So what you're going to do is you are going to um, elect, choose the sender lowest port id uh, lowest port priority number so the guy with the lowest port priority number will be the designated and the other one is going will be blocked so if port each one of those ports let's say he's the root bridge and he is the non-root bridge so he is going to pick one of both of them are going to be designated they cannot be both designated one of them has to block now the port priority on both of them is 128 by default. So the cost is the same. The port priority is the same. So the last thing you get to choose is the port ID, the lowest port ID. So all one will be stay designated because he's a lower port ID than O2. Okay. So by default, all one will always be the designated. And um, O2 will be the non-designated, the alternate. You could change the cost if you want. Or if you leave the cost the same, you could change the port priority number. So you can elect different. You can change the, you know. But if you leave everything the same, if you leave the cost of the link, let's say they're both 10 gigabit. So that means they'll both have a cost of two. You leave the prior the port priority the same, which is 128, then the ID will be picked by default. All right, so that's that. And so this, by the way, this is blocked because he's the other guy. The root will always be designated, regardless, right? So these are the, the two people are going to communicate with each other. He's going to be the port number. All right, um, continue on. So let's talk about timers. You please um, write the following down. The STP timers, you, if you're going to change any of these timers, you have to do that. Um, you have to do this at the root bridge only. All right, so the hello timer is the timer between the bridge protocol data units, the, PD, the PPDUs, the one that you pass to each other to elect the bridge. The default is two seconds, and the range is from one to 10. The forward delay timer is the time. It is the time for the listening and the learning states. When you're listening and learning about when you are passing the PPDUs, the default is 15 seconds and the range is between four and 30 seconds. The maximum age timer, which is the time to wait for the, for the change in the STP topology, if something went wrong, is about 20 seconds. The default is 20. And the range is between 6 and 40. All right. Um, now, also, please write the following down for the five states. You have locking, which means the BPDUs receive, receive only packets, no updates to the MAC address table. The maximum age is 20 seconds, or they stay blocking until STP determines if it's not the root. A designated or an alternate port so you'll be in blocking till the election is over okay then you move if you turn your link up if you connect your um, a cable into the port you go into blocking immediately right that's why you see that amber color on your switch when you connect a cable to it and then you once you're once that's done you move on to the listening uh, state the listening state, that means you have a forwarding delay. You're not sending out data for 15 seconds. You are, during the listening state, you are not updating anything in the MAC address table. And then after 15 seconds, you move to the learning state. In the learning state, there's also another 15 um, delay seconds. And the MAC address table is, you know, you can update the MAC address table. That's when you're doing it in the learning. Once that's done, then you move to the forwarding state. All right. All right. So uh, those are your states. 
Moving on. Now, her VLAN STP is, um, this is what you can, you know, we we're talking about STP for all the VLANs, you know, one root bridge. But now remember in the bridge ID, the middle part is the extended system ID. That's the, that's for the VLAN. You could, you could elect, you can break up the whole tree into multiple VLANs. So VLAN one is on the top, VLAN two is on the left, VLAN three is on the bottom and so on. So each VLAN can they elect their own root bridge. And you do that, and that's what the PVST plus is. PVST is a root, a root bridge is elected for each VLAN. There's another one called the RSTP, the Rapid Spanning Tree Protocol. And this is um, an IEEE 802.1D. It used to, in the, in the old days, in 2004, it was now, it is the IEEE 802.1W. That's probably a good idea to write down. The RSTP is the IEEE 802.1D, and they migrated it. Now the standard is the 802.1W. All right. Uh, Cisco PVST Plus is always running by default on any iOS 15 or higher. Write that down. PVST Plus is running on Cisco routers. On Cisco switches, I'm sorry, by default, all right? On any operating system that is uh, 15 or higher. All right, so um, so that's these are the different varieties of STP. Um, it's good to know. Take a snapshot, take a snippet, and include that in your notes. It's good I, because they do come up with a lot of questions. In fact, what I'm going to do is uh, with uh, I want you to do the following here. I want you to write the following notes with the port states, because I know this comes up a lot on the STP. On, I'm sorry, on the CCNA test. So STP, how do you compare STP? And the, this is the, uh, the old STP ports. And this is the rapid STP. So disable blocking and listening. We call that now discarding. Learning is the same, forwarding is the same. In the port roles, root port is called root port, designated is called designated, blocked, or non-designated is breaking up into backup and alternate. I've, when I, whenever I took the CCNA test and when I ever renew it, this always comes up. All right, so please uh, write this down and also write the rest of the notes down. All right. Now, if you remember, we talked about um, the port states. Um, uh, you know, you go from blocking to listening to learning. So what happens if you are on the edge? So let's say um, you have an edge notes, right? Yeah, I'll show you. Let me just go up a little bit. I just want to show you a topology. These guys right here, these are where you have workstations. There are not trunks. So when you plug something in, you don't want to go through the learning stage and the listening, the listening and the learning. And uh, so what you want to do is you want to skip the 30 second delay that is between the listening and the learning stage and go immediately to port fast. So what we're going to do is we are going to do a port fast on these. So to skip the listening and the learning stage. So when you plug in your PC into the port, it goes to forwarding immediately. All right. Uh, and the reason you want to do that, if you plug it in and you allow the listening and the learning states, you're going to have the amber color. And this guy is trying to get an IP address from a DHCP server. It might fail. Not good. Right. So you want it to move quickly, turn it, let it turn green so he can get his IP address from the whatever the DHCP server is. That's the whole idea while we making it port fast. So port fast is to skip the 30 second delay caused by listening and learning states and transition directly to the forward and causing, uh, it might cause a problem with the DHCP endpoint. Now, should it should only be an access port. So let me go back to the notes because you guys are writing these. It should be used only on access ports, the ones that are connected to PCs. If configured on a trunk port, it can cause a loop, right? You, because that means you're not going through the listening and the learning states. 
Port Fast Port should never receive Bridgeport the Bridgeport uh, protocol data units. Otherwise, loop may occur. So you want to use uh, BPDUs. Okay, so you want to make sure that you have uh, PBDU guards in here because somebody can pretend to be a bridge. So when you make port fast, make sure you uh, you type in the command spanning tree BPDU. So you go to the end device, fast ethernet zero one. So let's do zero 011 in this case here. And you type spanning tree port fast. And then you type spanning tree BPDU guard. All right. Uh, what else do you need to know? Note, layer three routing allows for redundant pass and loops in the topology. So this is a good note to remember. Without blocking the ports, okay? Which you remember the TTL number we used, we talked about that earlier. For this reason, some environments are transitioning from layer three everywhere except where the devices connect to the access layer switch. In other words, the connections between the access layer switches and distributed switches are always layer three switches instead of layer two. Layer three switches no, deal with packets and packets have the TTL number and we don't have to worry about STP and blocking ports and all that one crazy stuff that happens and that creates delay. So it makes it a lot easier. All right, so for configuration purposes, all you have to do, it's really a couple of commands is here's a command for example you do it on the switch and you say spanning tree for vlan 1 10 and 20 i want the priority to be 4096 so i'm changing the bridge priority from the 32 um the default number uh, if you remember let me see the default number is 32768 i'm changing it to 4096 if i change the priority number for this specific uh, so specific switch that switch will be the root bridge for vlan 1 10 and 20. remember when you're writing 10 comma 10 i'm sorry 1 comma 10 comma 20 don't put spaces between them but there is a space between after spacing spanning dash tree space vlan space 1 comma 10 comma 20 space priority space 4096 if you want to have a backup right spanning tree vlan blah blah 1 10 20 priority and actually you got to change this number not 4096 you got to make it let's say 82 i'm sorry 80 92 right um is it 80 92 or 81 whatever you know 40 40 96 plus 40 96 right so that makes it what um i know i have a two so it's eight eighty one i'm not writing it right eighty one ninety two that's right i was right all right so that would be a backup route okay and we talked about the end devices to make them port fast and the bridge data unit all right, so that ends the STP. Will you please write the notes? I know it's a lot. And submit them as homework, and I'll uh, see you on the next video.